So I am not a good Widowmaker. Uh, just getting this out there right now, before we start this video, before we talk about anything else, I want to let you guys know that the gameplay here is not great. <laughs> uh, just going to prepare you. Uh, I, I tried my best. I filtered, distilled down like an hour's worth of raw footage down to like however many minutes this is of, of actually decent Widowmaker gameplay. So apologies ahead of time, but today we are going to be talking about the changes to Widowmaker that have recently hit the uh, live servers in Overwatch. Yesterday I did one McCree, and today, well, you guys requested I follow up with the one on Widowmaker, so today we're gonna talk about the nerfs and what it kinda all means. We're gonna go into some of the math. There isn't nearly as much math as there is uh, with McCree, just because, I mean, it's pretty straightforward where her changes were. But just as a refresher, guys, her base damage was decreased from 15 to 12, and the, uh, and the headshot multiplier was increased from 2 times to 2.5 times. And what that means is on a fully charged body shot, um, basically her sniper rifle will only hit for 120 as opposed to 150. And now that it's 2.5 times, it'll still make that 300 damage headshot profile. So headshot damage has not really changed, at least the maximum damage, but the body shot damage has changed. Um, other small changes or big changes depending on how you look at it. Uh, the unscoping animation is now mandatory so you can't quick scope in and out. Uh, that is really bothering a lot of people but as someone who doesn't play a lot of Widowmaker anyways, uh, basically a Widowmaker scrub right here, uh, it doesn't really affect me that much. Uh, infrared sight, ultimate cost increased by 10%. Now this one is a funny one, uh, I feel like it's not enough because a good Widowmaker should be able to get a shit ton of kills. So yeah, I feel like they should kind of bump that up a little bit given how powerful her ultimate is. But let's just focus today on the damage profiles of the Widow's Kiss sniper rifle, right? Because uh, that is kind of the more interesting, at least to me, uh, as far as the changes. Now, the biggest thing that people are addressing is, oh my gosh, now we can finally play Zenyatta, or oh my gosh, Tracer is now OP. Because Widow's Kiss cannot one-shot body shot 150 HP heroes, and that's all fine and dandy because playing as Zenyatta against the Widowmaker could be frustrating, especially if the Widowmaker is half decent and can land a body shot. So that alleviates that, and you're going to have to start landing your headshots a bit more. Um, you know, as Zenyatta, it's, this is interesting because if you land a body shot on Zenyatta, you're going to leave him with 30 HP. Now, I did some testing and essentially, you know, Zenyatta can basically regain his HP, at least some of it, through shields, getting it back up to 130. Now, obviously, 120 is smaller or less than 130, so you're going to have to land another body shot, and even then, he's still going to have HP left. So, as Zenyatta, he, he's got a lot more leeway and uh, space to work with. If you get hit and tagged by a body shot from the Widow's Kiss, a fully charged Widow's Kiss, you can just duck under cover and wait for your shield to recharge, and then you can run out again. Basically, this forces Widowmakers to up their game and land the headshots, which is, in my opinion, a great addition. I, I love increasing the skill ceiling for uh, any game, really, especially with snipers, oh my gosh. Uh, with Tracer, I feel like this is going to be um, maybe debatable. Uh, in my opinion, I think it's a good change because one-shot body-shotting a Tracer, it seems like it's going to be a little too easy. So now you have to land that headshot because if you land the body shot, a Tracer is going to survive. They're going to you know, recall. They're going to blink, what have you, heal up. So landing headshots on Widow's Kiss is a lot more uh, essential. Now people are going to say, oh well luckily you can still one shot headshot 300 HP heroes. Well I'm going to stop you right there because let's just think about all the 300 HP heroes in the game right now. And um, right now it's just Bastion. Bastion's the only one with 300 HP and what does he have? He has armor, right? So that means 5 damage out of the headshot damage is going to be taken off and he's going to be able to survive the headshot. And this, this was the case from, you know, pre-patch and post-patch, so nothing has really changed here. Uh, you will have to follow up with another shot to kill a Bastion. Kind of interesting stuff. Heroes that were kind of affected by this change uh, include Torbjorn. Torbjorn's level 1 turret can no longer be one-shotted by a fully charged shot from Widowmaker. Uh, it has 150 HP when it first comes out, so you're going to have to um, 
you know, double tap it to take it out because you're only able to do 120 damage now. So that's an interesting little dynamic there. I still think Widowmaker will be a good counter against a Torbjorn uh, just because of how powerful her, her sniper rifle still is. I mean, it's hit scan, it's got really, really long range, you know, so Widowmaker's still viable, but I felt like that little note uh, was, was worthy of mentioning. Other heroes are affected would be the heroes in the 250 range. Uh, that's the magic number because two body shots from the newly 120 damage sniper rifle will no longer kill Mei and Reaper. Both heroes that can escape rather easily once they are tagged, especially twice. I mean, if you get tagged twice by a Widowmaker body shots and you don't escape, uh, yeah, you may have to work on your, uh, your, your hero gameplay there. But currently, I feel like as Widowmaker, you are kind of forced to go for the headshot um, on May and Reaper. Because if you land two body shots, you, you essentially have to land three body shots on a May or Reaper to kill them, which is pretty crazy. So definitely, again, this is kind of going back to how important landing headshots on Widowmaker is. And I personally love this. I mean, like, it's increasing the skill ceiling. I know a lot of you guys may disagree with me, but in my opinion, like, sniper classes should not be that easy to use. I mean, you should be able to, you know, I mean, you should be able to do damage if you land a body shot, you know, which is certainly still there. 120 damage is not something to laugh at, but you shouldn't be able to one-shot headshot or one-shot body shot heroes like, you know, Zenyatta and Tracer. And, um, kind of heroes of the 250 range, they definitely have a lot more leeway to work with. And yeah, I think that's kind of it. I mean, like, those are sort of the main heroes that I feel like are affected by the changes to Widowmaker. Widowmaker is still great. I mean, it. I feel like functionally she's the same. You just have to get better with her to make her, uh, you know, to, to make her perform like she used to. You have to land a lot more headshots, which in my opinion is great. It's not like they made the sniper rifle like random or less accurate. God forbid, that would be terrible. But yeah, I mean, those are just sort of the uh, quick rundown of what the Widowmaker changes all mean. And yeah, it's, it's a little shorter than the McCree one, but again, there's not too much to talk about here. It's just kind of a pretty straightforward nerf to the, uh, or I shouldn't say nerf, rework to the sniper rifle. Anyways guys, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you're new to my channel, be sure to check out some of my other videos. I just did the same type of thing to McCree, it's a bit longer. And if you're interested in some hero guides, I got a shit ton of them. So yeah, until next time guys, I'll see you around.